yeah. into the car. So like maintenance in general, people aren't a big fan of. Unfortunately mm. though, it is a necessary evil with your laser. So if you want to get the most out of your laser and that's the most length, life, uh, productivity, efficiency from your laser, you really, really want to keep up on your maintenance schedule. Now, if you go through your user manual, uh, Scott's done a great job of highlighting your uh, weekly, monthly, and quarterly um, maintenance schedules and um, keeping up with those. The one that we wanted to talk about today, and it's one that I don't think enough people spend enough time with, is the um, cleanliness of your lens. Now, yes. with the Pro Series lens, it's a little tricky to get in there, but uh, Walker, what's some of the reasons why you want to keep that lens nice and clean? So it's focusing your beam to that small beam width. If it's dirty, cracked, something of that sort, then your beam is not going to be clean. It's going to be fragmented and you're not going to cut well. Absolutely. So you can imagine if you're looking through a dirty pair of glasses or if you have a smudge on your camera lens, that same way that your image is passing through a dirty piece of glass, your beam of light that's going to be used to vaporize at a very precise level, um, your material is passing through an optics that just is now instead of uh, freely letting the beam pass through and focusing correctly, it's f literally fighting through some of the material that's built up. Um, the mm -hmm. cleanliness of your, uh, of your lens really can't be understated. Uh, that's why we include in with your packet um, a few of these Zeiss lens wipes. Let's see, make sure we get a good focus on that. But uh, no shout out to Zeiss, but they do make amazing uh, <laughs> you know, optics for uh, all your cameras. But these Zeiss lens wipes are getting included in with your uh, uh, kit are there for a reason. I mean, there are times in large engraving jobs, I'll clean the optics in the middle of the job just to make sure it's clean and not getting built up. Because really, once that buildup starts occurring on your lens and the beam's passing through, what, what occurs then? So, you want to always keep it clean because if it's dirty and you're like, oh, it's not that dirty, you know. Right. Uh, th as that beam and that power passes through that lens and hits the small debris, it's going to eventually ruin your lens. We have some examples of that, don't we? Yeah, let's pull them up. Yeah, Charles, why don't we look at uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that it gets it gets pretty gross pretty quick. So um, So that one's just dirty. Yeah. That one needs a clean. And well this one actually this one uh, cracked from result of having so much buildup and residue that it just kept holding all the uh, the heat from the Yeah, it can hold the heat and crack. You can tighten that little ring too much and Absol it cracks. Yep. Uh, sometimes it's barely, you know, you can barely see that crack. And so you don't think anything of it, you put it back in there, and then this is a result. What's the uh, next one we have, Charles? Here's so another. This is a dirty mirror. Dirty mirror, absolutely. And it's the same exact thing. Now that mirror is just polished down metal, right? With a little bit of a coating on it that makes it reflective. It's not actually passing through glass, it's just reflecting off that mirror. Yeah, it's just a reflector, and right. it's the same exact thing. And it's almost worse in a way that it, that's further down the line. Uh, that's closest to the output. Absolutely. So that beam can scatter from that point while it's getting to your lens. Absolutely. You can imagine if you had, um, you know, really a huge smudge like that on your camera lens and then you were trying to take a good photo, uh, you wouldn't expect that photo to turn out very good. You would look at that lens and go, oh, that's probably going to be a pretty dirty, smudgy, bad vacation photo. I you think we have one more photo. photo. One more? Oh. oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Here's a good one where it's actually scorched and burned down. You can actually see where the... Uh, the beam was starting to almost split and start affecting two different areas. Yeah, I mean, this could be caused by multiple things, but it's definitely like it was out of alignment. They never cleaned it. They ran the job. Chain the alignment came out of alignment even almost more. It was a perfect storm of things not to do uh, in that photo. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. And then we have one more, I think. Is there one more, Charles? The clean one? Yeah. All right, now, uh, this is one I wanted to show. This is actually on the laser itself. Wait, that's a diode exiting, right? Th that is actually, looks like the actual output on the laser itself. So you can take that metal cap off and not a lot of people know that there's an actual lens at the end of your laser tube. Well, that's what starts the beam, right? And gets yeah. it focused uh, going down the travel. Exactly. Right. And that can get dirty and a lot of people have gone through alignment, cleaned all their mirrors, lenses, and they're like, still, I don't know what's going on. Right. That's usually the culprit. Right there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can notice too on hobby lasers, especially if you're a Muse user, uh, that your exhaust sort of goes over that area. And you can see that a few of your mirrors actually require just a little bit more love than the other mirrors just because of the direction of the exhaust. So if you can think about that too, some of the positioning in your bed, obviously the top left hand corner is going to have the shortest path travel for your beam to go. So you can have the most power in the top left hand corner. 
It's also though when you're using that top left hand corner, you're exposing a lot of those mirrors to uh, the exhaust. So just kind of keep that in mind. I usually try to keep the, uh, the job actually more in the center of the, uh, the laser because it kind of keeps me uh, more checked uh, with alignment. So if I'm a little out of alignment, I mm -hmm. really do take a minute to just uh, realign the laser real quick because you really do notice when you're in the middle of the bed and you kind of get to the bottom corner. Or if you're in the top left-hand corner of the bed, a lot of times you don't quite notice that you've gone out of alignment a little bit no. until you're noticing that your engravings don't quite look right. And it's like, uh, it seems in line. Uh, but it's really yeah. not. It's just it came a little out of line. It's just a nature of you know doing engravings. I do a lot of engravings. You um, are the raster master. The raster master, they say. Yeah. They um, uh, when you're doing a lot of engravings, especially if you're going fast, uh, just know that, that jogging back and forth is just giving a little bit of jostling to your machine, and just something to keep uh, keep in mind. Uh, one thing you do to combat that though is slow the laser head down a little bit. This also keeps your um, engravings a little bit more accurate. Yeah, if you have high details, slow that laser down and you're going to hit it with that power setting perfectly. Absolutely. So now we're going to go through uh, this process here with the, um, uh, with the Pro Series lens, right? Yeah, so this guy, this is your laser head and your lens is inside. Now this comes off, you remove the air assist right here, and then there's a thumb screw, two thumb screws for this guy particularly. So essentially you're taking off this assembly piece from the laser to do this uh, process. Yeah, so this okay. slides, slides out right after down. all that, and then if we pull the camera down, yep. we'll take a look at I it. I gotcha. All righty. Just looks like it's gonna get a little loose here. You got it. There we there go. There we go. So what I like to do is I will loosen this guy up. This is awesome that it just screws off. And then you'll see the lens inside there. Now, this has a, I believe they call it ring collar uh, screw. Yeah, there you go. So you can see there's just a little bit of a ring there around the lens. Yeah, and it's, it's a little dirty, honestly. And it looks like there's a chip on the edge from somebody tightening it down way too much. Yeah, it looks like this is from one of our older Pro machines. So I would probably replace this guy if I was going to, you know, be picky. Okay. So you get a tool, though, that it's included with the... Uh yeah, so inside your tool kit, there will be this baggie. And a lot of people don't know what this guy's for. And we're going to show you. So this guy just goes in here. And it's essentially a big flathead screwdriver. And we're just going to spin this guy upside down until this collar screw comes out. So this collar screw is basically just seating the lens inside the cone apparatus here. So this is not something you want to tighten down too much. It's not something you want to torque down at all. It's something you want to have just tight enough to keep the lens in place. Now this guy will come out and you want to use this tool. This tool is very important. Yep. I've used little screwdrivers on my own and scratched them my legs. Yep. That's exactly why we include it. So as you can see, this is basically just a small threaded ring that sits inside of it with the flat edge. So there's a little rubber O-ring. Now this rubber O-ring helps with that compression so that hopefully you're not pressing down too hard and also prevents the metal from touching the glass directly. Exactly. It's like you're a pro or something. I mean, this is laser talk. <laughs> so you can see that that lens has a little chip out of it. So we're going to go ahead and replace it. And this is our replacement lens. This is how they come. And you just pop this guy open. They have foam for safety. And they're wrapped in this microfiber cloth. So the microfiber cloth is important. It's very similar to uh, the lens kit the kit you want to make sure that you're using proper um, cloths when you're wiping off your optics so that any dirt on it doesn't create a scratch do not use cotton swaps that's yeah. a common common yeah. thing don't use um, another one is um, the oh, I guess that's what you're saying cotton swabs like the um, q-tip right? yeah no q-tips yeah, no q-tips nothing of that sort what's that sure. uh, right so like <laughs> our uh, Scott's yeah, also no. mentioning like the inside of your shirt not the best not the best not the best now Unless you have a microfiber shirt and then yeah. look at you. Then not you're yeah. fancy. Then you're probably super fancy. So this lens has to be convex side up. So when it's upside down, convex side up. 
So um, as right now, we're looking at the portion that uh, would be facing towards the material, right? Yeah, so upside down, we're looking at it. And this is going to be concave as we look at it. OK, so essentially, the curved side of the lens needs to be facing from the direction the beam's coming from, correct? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. con, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we're going to yeah. place the O-ring, correct? Yeah, O-ring back in there. And just set it flush on top of that lens, making sure that you don't touch that lens itself. You just replaced it. You just, you know, got yep. a new one, so you don't want to ruin it instantly. Set this guy on here. And I'll usually start it with my fingers. And then I'll go back with the tool. It's a lot easier on on the a tabletop like this. Right. And then we put down this cloth too just to make sure that we could set the lens down someplace safe and make sure it's okay. So what we're going to do is put this old lens back in this casing. We're actually going to hold on to this because in a pinch, it's always good to have another piece of glass available that will work. Uh, because even though that has a little chip in it, that would still work out yeah. just fine. But just for the case of example here, we're just going to switch it out. And then we'll just screw this guy back on. You'll shove this guy back in, thumb screw, and add your air assist. And, and you're good to go. There it is.